Draw.io is a free diagramming application which can be used to create charts and graphics. It's browser-based, so you don't need to install anything to use it. Some examples that Draw.io can be used for is for making flowcharts, a network map, or an infographic. One of the best things about it is how easy it is to collaborate with others. If you both have a Google account, you can work on a diagram simultaneously from different devices. To get started, just go to draw.io and you'll get these two options, create new diagram or open existing diagram. For now, let's just create a new diagram. We've got lots of templates here that can help you get started, but we'll just start with a blank diagram and click create. Here, we've got the diagram in the center. This is where we'll add all of our symbols that will make up our graphic. You can scroll up or down with the mouse wheel. Or click the mouse wheel and drag around to move the diagram freely. And you can zoom in or out by pressing control and scrolling up or down with the wheel. On the left, we've got the scratch pad and the symbol libraries. Right now, only the general category is open, but you can click these libraries to drop them down and choose from all the different symbols available. I'll close these down since we'll only be using a couple symbols from the general category. There are two ways to add symbols to the diagram. First, just click and drag the symbol you'd like to add to the diagram. Alternatively, you can just click the symbol you want and it will be added to the diagram. This is useful if you want to add multiple symbols. Just click the ones you want and they're automatically placed on the diagram. Once the symbols are added, you can drag them around and place them where you'd like. As you drag them around, guidelines are used to help you line everything up. If you don't like the guidelines, deselect everything by clicking the diagram and uncheck Guides in the Format panel. I like them, so I'll leave it checked. You can resize a symbol by selecting it and then dragging these handles or you can rotate by clicking the rotate icon above the symbol and dragging the cursor. After you place the symbols, you can connect them together with lines. Make sure the symbol that you want to connect is deselected and hover the mouse over it. Notice the little blue X's along the border of the oval. Each of these are connection points, and if you click on them, you can drag out a line which you can connect to other symbols. Hovering over another symbol shows its connection points. The line will be placed based on which connection point you choose. You can also clone symbols you've already placed. When you hover over a symbol, notice the four blue arrows surrounding it. If you click this arrow, it will clone the symbol and create a connection. If you hold down Control and click the blue arrow, it will clone the object without a connection. There's a text symbol in the general library that you can use to add text to the diagram. But if you want to add text to a symbol that you've already placed, just double-click it and enter what you'd like. Then, when you drag the symbol around, the text moves with it. Finally, we have the Format panel on the right, where we can customize our diagram, symbols, and lines. With nothing selected, we can format the diagram itself. From here, you can turn the grid on or off or customize its size and color. If page view is selected, it limits the amount of space we have to pages. If it's unchecked, we've got an unlimited amount of space. When page view is checked, the diagram is the size of one page. If you need more space, just drag a symbol off the page and drop it, and another page will be added. You can do this in any direction. We can set the background to an image or set it to a solid color and turn shadows on or off. With a symbol selected, you can set the fill color with these swatches or with this color selector. Also, line is the border around the symbol, which you can turn on or off. Set the color or change the style of the line. Under the Text tab, we can change the font of the text we added to the symbol and bring the size up a bit. 
If you select a line, you can format it in the formatting panel too. You can change the way the line curves from sharp to rounded or curved. I'll go with rounded. You can change the style of the line also. I'll set it to dotted. Last, you can change the arrow at the end of the line to a different symbol. I'll set it to a diamond. You can also set the arrow for the other side of the line too. Once you've finished your diagram, click here to save your file as an XML file, which you can open again in Draw.io later if you need to edit it. To export it, click on File and go down to Export and choose how you'd like to export it as an image, a PDF, or whatever you'd like. That's the basics of creating a diagram in Draw.io. There's lots of cool stuff you can make using this. This is a great way to diagram a branching story in a game or to plan out how you're going to code a project. It's definitely worth it to learn how to use Draw.io to help you with your creative projects or to create compelling infographics.